Welcome to Range Rover's Design and Engineering Centre. My name's Johnny Smith and I'm going behind the scenes to meet some of the designers and engineers responsible for creating Range Rover's all new Amazing Evoque. We'll be finding out just what it takes to turn an awesome concept vehicle into an awesome real vehicle. And where better to start than at the beginning, the design and prototype build. Wouldn't it be great if building a car was just a simple process of gluing a few bits together and then painting them in attractive colours? Unfortunately, it's a little bit more complicated than that. I'm reliably informed that you need the following. Product strategy letters of authority. Concept design investigations. See-through vision properties. Program start milestones. Virtual clinics. Full-sized interior clay models. Full-sized Full exterior, exterior play play models. Models. Go, Go for one, one of events. events. Stop, Stop playing. playing. And all that has to happen before you can even start to think about the, um, the cubing reference models and the CDRMs, customer design reference models. To tell me more about what all that means, I went to have a chat with Mr. Jerry McGovern. Jerry is Range Rover's design director and the mastermind behind the design of the new Evoque. The first thing I wanted to know was why he felt that the world needed a smaller Range Rover. It is the smallest, lightest Range Rover. Clearly that talks to a world that's far more conscious of sustainability. Now we're not saying all our vehicles now are suddenly going to shrink. It's fairly true to say, however, all our vehicles will become much lighter and more fuel efficient, etc. And I can remember in some of the early debates about, oh well, we need to get more wheel travel, so that's going to change the profile. We're going to need to put the roof up at the back, so we've got more. No, no. we've got to engineer it in a way that allows us to create this exciting, dramatic, totally unique shape. This isn't just about me on my own, I'm surrounded by some incredibly capable people, both designers and engineers. Things like this very dramatic falling roof and this very distinctive rising belt line, the waistline, is something we've never seen before. It talks to a sort of coupe-like vehicle, but it's still unmistakably a Range Rover. The inside of Range Rovers up till now has been very important, it's the cockpit, it's where you sit. Is this going to be very similar, it's going to have the DNA of, of the bigger brothers? This isn't supposed to be meant as an entry level vehicle. This is somebody who wants Range Rover, who wants the qualities that are intrinsic to Range Rover, but they want it on a smaller scale. It's going to have premium levels of quality that we probably wouldn't have seen in any vehicle of this size before. I personally have a high confidence level that this is gonna, is gonna hit the sweet spot. I could have talked to Jerry all day, but he had to go to work on his next design masterpiece. So join me in part two as I have a nose around this huge design complex and find out why I'm wearing these. Talking to Jerry and meeting his team has given me a real insight into the design process. They start by creating these monster mood boards to feed their creativity before translating them as themes for interior and exterior mock-ups. The end result is a huge variety of different material crafted into a beautiful interior that is perfectly Range Rover. So, when everyone's happy with the overall theme, the designers team up with the engineers to do battle in a virtual world of vehicle testing. 
Life-size 3D virtual models are created and displayed on massive screens in this top-secret, highly sophisticated area known as the cave. Here the engineers and designers interact with the model, moving all around the vehicle, even opening virtual doors and windows as they carry out various calculations and simulations to give a precise picture of how they expect the vehicle to perform. But you know what? There's only so much you can do with virtual testing. At some point before the car goes on sale, you have to make sure that all of those independent calculations work in the real world. And for that, you need to build a real car. And so some of the best engineers from Range Rover assemble in a top secret location to build more than 130 prototype vehicles. Now these are not the final cars, these are the butterflies of the car process, destined to live short but glorious lives as they're basically built to be destroyed. These brave vehicles are sent off all over the world to experience everything that nature and mankind can throw at them. But as these cars haven't been revealed to the public yet, each one needs to be camouflaged to stop those pesky spy photographers spoiling the surprise. Mind you, this being a Range Rover, even the camouflage is designer. Today has been a real eye-opener. I've discovered that it takes hundreds of designers and engineers working together as one big team to design and develop something as complex and desirable as the new Range Rover Evoque. There's no question that designing a car today, a desirable one at that, is met with a barrage of constraints. This is Range Rover's largest ever leap, yet smallest ever package, and one that's truly 21st century. If you thought you'd never buy a Range Rover, the Evoque is all out to change that. Mm -hmm.